Hello everyone, greetings to one and all. In today's session, we are going to see the debugging tool overview. This particular concept, what I'm going to explain you, is going to make your debugging process more efficient. It's very important for both functional and technical consultants to know about the different options available in a debugger tool to make their life easier during decoding any issue or during going through any program. Now, let's move on without wasting further time. So in this session, I'll be explaining you about the debugging process and the debugger tool. As you know, debugger tool is a tool provided by SAP to inspect the coding during runtime. The tool has many options with it and it can help us in understanding the program flow. We can also access the variables that's used and the flexibility options in debugger tool will be explained now. I'm directly going to jump into the hands-on session. So this is the program that I have used for explaining the debugging, debugging concept. And in my previous episode, I would have used the same program for explaining you the debugging process and the different keys that are available, where, which are very significant for us, which are critical for us to complete the debugging process. If you have not gone through my previous episode, I request you to pause here, go through my previous episode and come back here for having a better relevance and for better understanding. So let me execute this. And by now, if you have watched my previous episode, you should be knowing how to place the breakpoints and the basics of the debugging process, how to trigger it. So since I have placed a breakpoint, I'm going to execute this particular program without any inputs, just uh, so that I can explain all the concepts of debugging. As soon as I execute, the debugger window gets popped up. So this is the debugger tool for you, right? So I'm going to explain you about the different tabs here. The desktop one and desktop three are same tabs, only the alignments are different. So it has two different trays. The first tray is the coding tray, which is at the top. The second tray is the variables tray, which is at the bottom. In desktop three, they are just aligned side by side. That's it. Now, let me explain the sub tabs here. So the variables one, variables two are same, wherein whenever you double click on any particular variable here, they just pop up on the window at the right side so that you can, again, you can have a deeper insight of that variable again by double clicking that variable okay now let me move to desktop 3 again similarly any variable be it any variable if you want to see the values that it holds you just double click on that variable bring it to the right pan or uh, bring it to the variables 1 or variable 2 pan you can even bring it to variable 2 as well just by double clicking whichever pan is on here on the right side that gets populated with the variable that you just double clicked so right now this s underscore stud is nothing but our selection screen uh, field since i have not input any value the table is empty as you see here okay now how do i bring the values to it i mean how do i know get to know the values of it just by double clicking right now if you see here in the variables one i have double clicked only ls underscore student that's why i have it here if i want to bring it in variables two tab i just have to select the variables two tab and double click it so that it gets populated here that's it so the globals and uh, locals and global tabs are pretty straightforward wherein local tab will hold only the local variables what are local variables any variable that are available only during that particular segment or during the particular code block it's like their life cycle is only inside that code block which is getting executed global variables will hold those variables which are whose life cycle is throughout the program execution even outside of this particular uh, subroutine or code block or the segment these variables will still be active whenever a variable is not active they will hold this particular symbol stating that this variable is inactive if you see here this particular you can if you, if you can watch my cursor it states that this variable is inactive if you don't have this particular icon it means that this variable is active as soon as i move out of this particular subroutine you can see this ls underscore ls underscore student will become inactive as well so that's it with desktop one and desktop three. Uh, here, this auto and memory analysis tabs, I probably prefer to explain it in a different set of video with right examples. So I'm not going to explain these concepts in this video, right? Now I'll move on to desktop two. Desktop two helps you to understand the program flow. So these are all the program, these are all the event type, or this is the event that gets called during your program flow. So when I say program flow, this program flow is again specific to certain events that you have mentioned in the program now for example this is my program and i have mentioned these four events start of selection end of selection at selection screen initialization these are all the different events to know more about events i'll be publishing a separate video on a different uh, channel i mean different series i'll be publishing a separate video to help you understand more about the events for now just understand these keywords represents an event itself 
So what I was trying to explain is, with respect to each of this event, this desktop two, this tax screen help us to understand and know the program flow. Now, as soon as I move on to the next event, you can see all these entries that you see gets cleared and it will start popping up the program flow from the beginning of that particular event. You will have a better understanding when I move to the next event. Okay, so desktop two is helps you to understand the program stack, the ABAP stack, or in other words, the program flow with respect to events. Okay, standard is just a combination of desktop two and desktop three. You can see the window screen, the coding uh, tray here. This is your stack tray, and this is your variable tray. Okay, now if you have watched carefully, whenever I double clicked on any particular variable, the tabs get toggled to another tab here. So if it is a structure, it will toggle to the structure. Okay. If it is a table, as this S underscore student, STUD is a table, right? So if I double click that, it will move to the table step. So that's what it's about. So this is the better flexibility that the debugger tool gives us to have a better view of those particular variables. So when I double click on a structure, it just helps us to understand the different fields that are present and the values they hold. For now, they are all empty because I have not executed any statement so far. As soon as I start executing, for example, let me execute this statement. Okay. Now, as soon as I execute this statement, my LS underscore student will hold some values. If you see here, see, they started holding some values. So you will see the relevant values that are getting displayed. Okay. Now, since I have not input any values into my S underscore uh, STUD, which is a selection screen variable, this is empty. I'll show the example with a different table, which can hold value. Okay. Now, if I proceed further, as I told you, the structure and table step will only help you to view the structures and the tables respectively. Okay. So whenever you double click on a structure or whenever you double click on a table in your debugging screen, the relevant tabs gets popped up and it just juggles between these tabs. The object is something that's relevant to OOPS concept or Java concept. If there are any class variables or var uh, uh, methods used, you can use that particular variable and you can enter and it will help you to understand the different uh, classes, uh, the, what are all the class that's been used, what are the different attributes of this particular class variable. Now, for example, if I place, paste, I mean, if I paste this class variable here and if I double click it, automatically it will take me to the objects tab. So that's what I was trying to explain. In the details tab, you can have a check on any of the field. Now, for example, if you go, if I want to check any particular field, say GV underscore VBL1, okay? So this variable value is one. If I double click it, this particular details tab will help me. What is this particular variable? What is the data type? What is the value of it? And what is the content length of it? I mean, the hexadecimal count of this particular variable, okay? Now, why did this value hold as A? Because in my program, I have declared this variable with a value already, if you see here. So that's the reason it is already holding a value A. And when I double click, it reaches out to my detail tab. Now this data explorer tab helps me in understanding the table that's gonna be used. Now GT underscore table is a standard table, I mean global table, and it is not holding value yet. But let's come back to the same tab after it holds value, okay? The breakpoint tab helps us to understand the different types of breakpoints that we have placed. So far in the program, as I showed at the beginning, we had only two breakpoints. That's the reason you can see both these breakpoints. This can also help us with a lot of other details that's happening in the debugger tool. And there are also different types of breakpoints that can be set. Um, in my subsequent video, I'm going to explain in detail exclusively about these breakpoints so that you can have a better understanding. For now, you can just understand this is a tab where you can help to find out all the breakpoints and the watch points that are present as part of this execution. This different tab is a interesting tool where you can compare variables now, for example these two are the variables global variables that i'm using in the program and if i enter these variables and i click on start comparison this particular tool will help me with the differences between these two variables the elements have different lengths the elements have different number of pre decimal places the elements have different types the elements have different contents and this is a variable that's holding a value of 0, 0.00 and this is a variable that's holding a value of a so Basically, it also helps us with many other, uh, it, it just helps us with the comparisons between these two variables. That's what this different step does. The significance of it will be explained more in my subsequent videos. For now, this basic understanding to help you, should help you to get going. And the script is an interesting tab where you can write runtime coding. See, I can type anything here. For now, I'm not going to use this tab because I'm going to come up with a better example to explain the script tab. So now I think you would have got a better understanding about all these desktops. 
uh, desktop one, desktop two, desktop three, all these tabs. Okay. Now let me move on. So this is the program which is getting executed right now, and this is the include name here, as you can see, where the program control is. As you can see, this yellow indicator indicates the program is halted at this particular line item to proceed further. It's waiting for our command to get executed. The command, I mean the function keys, F5, F6, F7, F8, which I would have explained in my previous videos. So, without which the program will not move for the, uh, forward. Okay. So, this particular yellow screen can help us in understanding, I mean, this particular yellow indicator can help us in understanding where the program control is. So, for now, the program control is here, which is at line number 10, the same line number you can see here, and it is inside this particular subroutine, form validate. So, that's the reason you get this form here, and the validate is the block name, the subroutine name. So these are all the details which can explain you the program control. Where is the program control now in your debugging process? At which stage your debugging process is present? So this can help us with that. And as I press F5 and move along, you watch this particular indicator. As I press F5 and move along, you see the line number here is 12 and the line number here gets changed as well. Okay. The size sub RC and size uh, tab are the system variables where size sub RC helps us in understanding the execution of the statement. If it is zero, which means the execution of the statement is successful. Whether it is a select statement, if it is successfully fetching values, it will be zero. If not, it will hold different values like 4, 8. Each has its own significance. For now, since all the execution is getting successful, you can see the value always with zero. The side tab is usually uh, used to measure the index count when it is run in a loop or when it when it runs in a uh, any other while loop or a normal loop at statements okay just understand it helps us in understanding the index i'll explain these two variables better in my subsequent sessions when we have a complex program to debug now the local variable that i was trying to explain if you see here my local variable is still active here right now as soon as i come out of this particular subroutine you see my local variable gets disappeared and in my variables one tap my local variable will be pointed as invalid variable because its life cycle has ended in that particular subroutine. Now, as I move on to my next block, which is a method, local method, you see my local variable gets populated uh, with none of the values because there are no local variables here. But my global variables will still remain the same because their life cycle is throughout the program. Now, if you see here, I have executed the statement. The size sub value is zero, which means that it has successfully fetched values. When I double click this particular table, I can see there are seven entries. When I double click here, I can see the entry contents of this particular internal table. See, and if you go to data explorer now, and if I double click this again, it will toggle back to my tables and it will show me the contents of this. So that's what uh, this uh, table is about. And that's what these different tabs are about. Now, when I proceed further, as, you sh as I shown you, there are no local variables here. Henceforth, you don't see any. However, when I move on to the next window, you see here, this is a particular routine. Here again, there are no local variables. Hence, the screen is empty. But if I get into this, these are all the local variables that I declared. You see here, I have declared it here only, which means the life cycle of this particular variable is only inside this subroutine. Henceforth, all the local variables gets displayed here. And in the globals, the count will still remain the same from the beginning because they just bring out all the global variables. The CS underscore STUD is nothing but our selection screen element. And this is a text element and uh, it's invalid. If you see here, this particular sign, this particular icon helps us to understand whether it is valid or invalid. So that's what with this variables tab. And uh, let's move on to the menu bar here. If you see the single step execute return continue, I would have already explained you in my previous session about the significance of these four buttons, which is nothing but F5, F6, F7, and F8. The step size is an interesting option, wherein when you click that, each code block that's gonna execute on your F5 command will get highlighted. Now see, the line numbers are 33. The try is the block that's gonna get executed, and it is getting highlighted. And when I press F5 or F6 next, the command moves to the next line, and it is telling me on your next command, based upon your F5 or F6, this entire code that's highlighted is going to get executed. Now, if I press F6, as you know before, based on my previous videos, this entire code from 34 to 38 gets executed in a single step. Now, again, it's got, it got executed in a single step and system is again highlighting the next code that's completely going to get executed. So that's what the step size does. And if you click it again, the highlight part goes and it will just show you in the background format. As you can see, if you can watch closely, 
the there is a shadow on these lines right so that's the toggle between the step size okay so it helps you basically to understand at which command you are in and at which line you are in execute getting executed okay now if i go to the desktop tool to show the flow if you see here earlier you had six options when you were in a different event now you are in the end of selection event as i showed you before here you are in the end of selection event uh yeah here you are in the end of selection event right this is the event so as soon as the debugger screen has entered this event so this was the flow it called the display method i mean it's called the display form subroutine form a subroutine and then it called the data display method so that's what this desktop 2 which otherwise called as the sc abap screen stack will help us to understand it gives us the program flow so all other options here or individually a topic or itself and with the simple program example i will not be able to explain it clearly i'll explain each of the concepts in this debugger tool with complex programs so that the example is relevant for explaining the concepts so with this understanding i hope you will have a better clarity towards your next debugging process in my subsequent videos you can learn more about this debugging tool thank you so much and i'll quickly catch you up on my next video wherein uh my next video okay we just now had the hands-on session my next video i'm going to explain you the important concepts of breakpoints and after that i'll jump back to the tool and i'll explain the different flexible options interesting options that are available as part of the tool thank you for your time peace and blessings to you all